Uh, this will be our last press conference um, before Thanksgiving. We're going to give all of y'all off for Thanksgiving, right? Um, we'll keep working, but you won't have to worry about Thanksgiving a week. <clears throat> so today, we're going to do two things. Uh, we plan to announce our inauguration website uh, and then our first secretary uh, appointment. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to announce our inauguration website. The theme of the inauguration is Come Back Home, Louisiana. Uh, and as you know, we've said from the beginning, we're going to do things a lot differently um, than was done in the past. So our inaugural ball is going to be open to anyone who would like to purchase a ticket. Uh, it will be on a first-come, first-served basis, and so we're going to open it up to five, the first 5,000 people. Uh, and this event is going to be at the River Center in Baton Rouge. Remember, we want this administration to represent the people of Louisiana, uh, and that includes giving everyone an opportunity to come and celebrate uh, that night with us. Because again, I've, I continue to say this, this is not my administration, uh, this is the people of, of Louisiana's administration, this is our administration. And so in order to reserve a ticket, there will be a button at the top of our website. And you, if you go to our website at oneteam.la and then you click the button that says inauguration, <clears throat> and I repeat that, that's oneteam.la, click um, the, the link that says inauguration, uh, there is a section under which you can request uh, a ticket. I think you can request up to two tickets uh, on that form. Uh, and look, Sharon and the team have been planning and working real hard. This is going to be an unbelievable celebration uh, for Louisiana and one that many will not want to miss. So again, we want to make sure that everyone out there has an opportunity uh, to come and celebrate with us. All right, the second thing. So before I do that, I'd like to bring up um, some folks. Uh, Sharon, I'd, I'd like to invite three important people to come back up uh, and join me, my wife and the next first lady of the state, Sharon Landry, who is also chair uh, of our, one of our chairs on our transition team, uh, Tim Hardy, another transition uh, uh, chair and also the chair of the Environmental Council, and Aurelia Skipworth Jacomoto. Aurelia, all right, okay. Um, so, Aurelia is going to head the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, she will be the first black female to serve as the secretary of the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. And so a lot of folks may ask, well, why is this appointment so important? <clears throat> well, of course, everyone wants clean air and clean water. And all of you here today know that Louisiana is not new to a variety of environmental factors. Whether it be hurricanes or floods, whether it's the problem with our wetlands and on our coasts, it's important that our citizens live with good water and air quality. It's equally important that we protect jobs here in Louisiana. You know, during the campaign, I promised the voters of this state that we were going to concentrate on the businesses and industries that grew this state. And you know, some eight years ago, Louisiana was home to 23% of the refining capacity for the entire country. Sadly today, that amount is down. We've lost 2% of that refining capacity to other states. With that 2% loss meant many great paying jobs, many middle and upper middle class jobs exited this state when we lost that 2%. I have said again and again and again that our petrochemical industry, our oil and gas industry, has lifted more people out of poverty globally than any other industry on the planet. And I'll, I will debate anyone in that arena at any time. I've been saying it since my time in Congress. No one has taken me up on it. Why? Because it's true. And again, I'll repeat that. This industry, our petrochemical industry, our oil and gas industry, has lifted more people globally out of poverty than any other industry. So 
to protect our environment and to protect our industries, it's important that we have a highly qualified team of experts in both the industry and the environment. And it's also important that we were able to balance both. We want to be able to balance the environment and our industries and the jobs that they create. Worrying about one over the other is counterproductive to growing Louisiana. And so I'd also said from day one that we want to attract the best people to come to Louisiana. We all know that we have an outward migration problem and we're trying to fix that. And to do that, we want to attract people to come to our state. And that's exactly why I chose Aurelia to lead the Department of Environmental Quality. And I believe it's an unbelievable appointment. That's why I wanted to do it first. Um, she has visited Louisiana many times um, and, and she's come to love Louisiana. She has commented consistently with me about how much she loves the climate here, the culture here, but more importantly, how much she loves the people of Louisiana. And so I really am proud that we're able to attract someone of her caliber, her mind, her pedigree uh, to come to Louisiana and work with us. A little bit about her. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Howard University. She holds a Master of Science in Molecular Genetics from Purdue University and a law degree from the University of Kentucky. I'll let her argue that at LSU, right? Um, her career began in the private sector, working with Monsanto, which is now the Bayer Corporation. She was later tapped by former President Trump and confirmed by the United States Senate to serve as the director of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, where she was also the first black female to be appointed as the director there as well. She's just, I mean, one more, and it'd be like a trifecta, right? Um, <clears throat> there, under, in that title, she was responsible for managing over 850 million land and water acres. She managed endangered species programs, international conservation efforts, and enforcement of our fish and wildlife laws. She implemented policies to increase the habitats and wetlands management, modernized the permitting process and programs there, and recovered multiple endangered species. Again, I'm excited that we're able to secure someone uh, with Aurelia's national experience and background to serve in this cabinet. And then upon leaving the federal government, she returned to the private sector where she became an advisor on pre-commercial development of coal-based carbon advanced products and works, working to ensure that Louisiana leads on reliable energy. Today, she serves on the board at Ramco Resources, a publicly traded meteorological coal company, and a number of other nonprofit boards. Her selection was made with the consultation of my good friend and former law professor, Tim Hardy. Again, Tim's career began in government, serving as the top advisor of environmental affairs, under former Governor Buddy Romer. He served as the Assistant Secretary of the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality and a Division Director at the Louisiana Department of Justice. He has served on five Louisiana gubernatorial transition teams for both newly elected Democrats and Republicans. He is a chemist and has been an adjunct professor of environmental law at Southern University for 25 years, uh, where I had the pleasure of taking his class. Uh, and <clears throat> so he and I both worked real hard to make sure that we attracted top rate talent. He's chairing the environmental council uh, with a number of the folks that are sitting on that council as well. Uh, and we appreciate the work that they've been doing. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Come on, Greg. Um, so, Governor, I was wondering if you're talking about environmental quality and the balancing of jobs and the, uh, and the air and water quality. Is it your intention to continue uh, Governor Edwards' uh, goal to be carbon neutral by 2050? Is that, is that part of your plan as well? 
I mean, look, here, here's the thing. Everything that I've read about any policy of trying to be carbon neutral is extremely destructive at this time on the economy and certainly on the backs of the working people, not only in America, but in this country. Um, we are going to take a serious approach about protecting our environment while balancing the industries that have built this state so that we have good quality jobs here in Louisiana. We want to grow those jobs. In recent years, there's been a push for more offshore wind, and there's been a lot of leasing going on. Would you continue to push for that as well as continue supporting the oil and gas industry? Look, since my days in Congress, I've always said that I'm all of the above. Uh, I don't take any particular form of energy off the table. What I do want to make sure is that the folks in Louisiana, when they need their heat, when they need their air condition, when they need their lights, that we have reliable power here in this state. And so we will work to make sure that there's a por portfolio out there that ensures that Louisianans have reliable power here in this state. What's your take on the abandoned oil well issue? Um, we have quite a few, and it has been a hot topic um, over the past few years. Yeah, it's, uh, um, we've been having that for a long time. We've been having an abandoned orf orphan well program uh, probably since the days that I was in the environmental field, so that would be in the 90s. <clears throat> Look, I think that uh, we should take a good look uh, at ensuring that we address those. I know that the federal government uh, last year uh, put up a considerable amount of money uh, to help us um, and offset some of the cost of uh, plugging and abandoning plug, plugging uh, those abandoned wells. And I would hope that this administration, certainly with our guidance, would go out there and finish that particular job. Hey, Julie. Um, I have a question about something Governor Edwards did last week. He uh, adopted a paid parental leave policy for state government that won't take effect until like a week before you become governor. And I was wondering, one, how you feel about the timing of that and whether you've given any thought to uh, whether you're going to keep it in place the way it was presented. Well, I haven't seen the budget impact of that yet, um, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I have contacted both the Senate and the House leadership and asked them to take a look at it because, again, um, it's nice and we can be aspirational uh, as governors, but the legislature are the ones that have to find the money and pay for it. And so I thought it best to contact them about that issue. One last question. Uh, Sir, you've, uh, you've expressed that you want to have a special session on crime, and we've heard from uh, Commissioner Lefton Temple that he has called for a special session on insurance as quickly as possible. And now we have all this stuff with redistricting, bringing the, uh, calling the legislature back to Baton Rouge. I was just wondering if you could give us an idea as to what your uh, conversations are going on about how to move forward with all this. You really want to know how busy you're going to be in January and February. Is that what it is? <laughs> Um, pack your bag, <laughs> uh, you know, keep your pillow close. Look, <clears throat> um, we, uh, let's, let's kind of break those up. Uh, number one, we promised the voters that we would address crime, and we intend to do that. Um, we also know that um, the recent court case um, has required the legislature to go back and address the congressional maps. Uh, we're going to do that as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, I have been in contact, in fact, uh, the commissioner of insurance is actually sitting and co-chairing one of our transition teams on insurance. And my hope is that at the time that we have some prepackaged bills and some solutions uh, that we would call a, a special session on that. We're, I can, here's what I'll tell you. On the crime session, we're working to ensure that we put together a bill so that we're ready. Um, so the same, um, the same rule that I'm asking the commissioner uh, to live by, we intend to live by as well, and we are going to address the congressional maps as well. Look, again, thank you for your time. I, I really appreciate y'all coming. I'm telling you, this is an absolutely historic appointment for a number of reasons. Um, and I think most importantly, the exciting part is that we're already showing that we can attract people with the caliber that Aurelia has to the state of Louisiana. And we hope to, you know, at some point in time, attract them in the tens of thousands. Thank you. Have a great Thanksgiving.